like a real artist that's building an audience, it's happening everywhere because people all over the board love that person, um, him or her, like wherever they're blowing up. So I think for us, it was about early stage acceleration, cross-platform traction. And then I think our secret sauce. Jordan, what's happening, man? What's up, Sam? Out there in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, living life, baby. I see you, baby. Right? That's right. Me and Kanye <laughs> looking up, growing out the beard, full on mountain man mode, man. I very, to hit you, bro. I very zen, to hit very you. zen out these days, man. But uh, <laughs> also zen out because we're able to just have such great conversations with such incredible exactly. guests like who we got lined up today. Who we got, Jordan? Tell, tell the people. I'm going to tell the people. Today we have Shav Garg. He's the CEO and founder of a business called Indify. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Indify, it first started out, it's, it's been a company for about five years or so. They recently pivoted. So at the beginning, when they uh, were in their inception, they were uh, pretty much a data analytics platform where you could log in and, and based on the analytics that Indify found important, you could see who else, who was going to blow soon. So they found Post Malone really early because of that. They found Khalid really early when his name was Kai because of that. We get into those stories and we get into what they're doing now, which is pivoting to a service that helps artists build teams. So it helps musicians find lawyers, managers, and really build the backbone of a team that can help that artist su uh, succeed. So we go through the whole story of it with Shav, and uh, it's a really great story to go through. I think well, you know, whether you want to start a company or start a company in the tech industry and you also just kind of want to learn how to build a team yourself um, and how to use the platform to help you do that, I think you'll get a lot of this episode. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, no, I, I love it. And I think what's special about it is that um, having a team and the right partners are so critical. And I think by having a platform like Indify that's able to uh, disintermediate like the traditional media uh, middleman, a record label, if you will, it, it creates this very powerful like power shift in the music industry that's ultimately just going to empower more artists to succeed as independent artists by being able to have all these different pieces of the puzzle brought together via a platform like Indify rather than having to just sign with a major label. Not to say that that right. doesn't make sense for the right artist at the right time, but I think this is super valuable in that regard. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, it was really great to hear him talking about his fundraising journey. And then also too, as somebody that kind of came from this tech startup ecosystem and tech world, really just hearing him talk about some of the similarities between the startup world and the music industry and ultimately how he's really trying to kind of build an angel list of sorts for uh, the music industry and facilitate this sort of collaboration and transparency around some of the, the power players involved in the industry. So uh, kudos, hats off to our guy, Shav. Um, congrats on the pivot. Really excited to dive into some stuff here. One last thing though, before we do dive into the episode, do want to remind you guys and encourage you to join our Patreon community. Uh, we're having a lot of really awesome conversations in our discord channel. Just last night, we had a dope little happy hour. We were able to have a debate and a uh, candid conversation on a lot of hot topics in the industry. And I, I think it's great to be able to be in such a supportive community where, all, where we're all looking out for each other. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Musicbusinesspodcast.com slash community. But without any further ado, let's jump into this week's episode. Shav, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing good. How are you, bro? Matt, we're Great. doing well. Very excited to have you on the show today, man. Uh, I think for starters, I mean, I know Indify has been operating for a while, and recently there's been uh, some big news in regards to how you're evolving your, your value proposition to, to serve different members of the, the music industry community. But before we even get there, we'd love to really just talk a little bit about the, the founding story of Indify. How did you start it? How did it really yeah. kind of snowball? Well, I, I think it all uh, starts out of a love of music. Like for me, I mean, as, as, as I, I think it's shared and as it does for a lot of people in the music industry, for me, I, I mean, I've been a musician my whole life and my two co-founders and I have been obsessed with music, like more, you know, them as, as fans and listeners and, and supporters of artists and musicians. And, you know, Connor, our co-founder would probably like you all to know that he's been supporting me as a musician for a long time by my side, you know, holding my hand through the process. So uh, yeah, y'all have been homies for like a really long time, right? Yeah. I mean, it's funny because this article that came out, and I didn't, I didn't realize they were going to close with, with this, uh, this heavy hitter, but they talked to, they closed with the fact that we were on the same fourth grade late, uh, little league baseball team and like that we've been living together for a long time. And I'm like, damn, I said that. Um, I think that's legendary. I mean, it's, it, it really does feel like that. Like these are my best friends, like Matt, who 
is our CTO and co-founder. He built the whole platform himself. He's always like, he was building like stuff with pizza shops growing up. And then Connor, uh, you know, who is a brilliant, like wordsmith and storyteller and marketer, he entered at time and complex. And so he was able to kind of really bridge the gap between art and science in a way that like was really important for us going mm-hmm. For me, it was always easy to relate to the user and kind of represent our story like publicly and, and with the, on the business end. So very naturally, we all like fit in. But like, it wasn't that long ago that like in high school, like you know, we were just driving around like listening to like so far gone and like you know, like thank me later or like not there, like not far after that, like uh, nostalgia ultra and like acid rap and we were just big fans of like this whole online music ecosystem when it came to like good music all day and this song is sick and um you know two dope boys and i actually entered the sobs in high school so and, mm. and you know i was releasing music so i was trying to get on these blogs so i, I was really, <laughs> trying to get on the sobs that's like a that's like a legendary place to start everybody yeah. starts there i remember i was on stage holding joe button's towel and he'd come over and he'd grab it and wipe it <laughs> but like but like this is like rapping joe yes button. this, this is, is like pump, pump it up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, 2011, 2010. So yeah, I mean, we all, it all starts with music, man. Like that's really, before I even get into like what Indify is, the why of Indify, uh, which is all tied to this, it just starts with music. We're, we're music geeks. We love it. Like we're, we're obsessed with it and we're obsessed with uh, the online kind of music world and artists blowing up online. Like I would say we're, we're definitely like internet kids in that way. Right. But that's yeah, awesome. yeah I, I can bridge the gap even too to like how that led to us wanting to do into five. That's helpful. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, I mean, for myself, I interned at, uh, I ended up, you know, in college, like having the college band myself as, as one does. And, uh, I also interned at Warner music group and I saw streaming start to pop up in like 2012. And then I interned at one of those streaming services, one of the biggest ones in India. And this was in New York called Savin. And so there I was like fascinating tech to me felt a lot like making music, like you were designing right. products. People were engineers and, and, you know, producers, like, build it out. And, and you get to, like, drop this vision. And it was so interesting. And what I saw is there's a ton of information in these platforms. And so kind of, you know, you guys already, I just gave you the context. Like, knowing the ecosystem that there was and knowing that there was a ton of online data and a ton of blogs, I, I assume that, like, you know, with these new streaming services coming up, with the new data inside of these platforms, that labels and, and talent agencies and streaming services had, like, insane information and so when i started to talk to like uh anrs or scouts at labels or even like you know like ticketing companies different places like that um i started to find that like they used the same blogs that we were like using in high school to find music like it was really not that different and, and i was like these blogs like i've been on some of them you kind of just have to know somebody and it, it's like generally like a 17 18 year old kid that's writing this and then if right. you get through the ten thousand emails or you like know that blogger, that's how you get seen. And then you get seen by the industry, then you get a million dollar deal. And it was like this weird like domino effect where I'm like, wow, like this is a completely random way of being discovered. What about artists that are out there that are like building real fan bases? They're like, maybe they have people coming out. You know, it's one thing to be an artist and believe you should be like the biggest in the world and like you should blow up. It's another thing to actually be selling out tickets and still you're not getting seen because there's no bridge to connect you other than who you know, or if you have a cousin in the music industry or someone on these blogs that like you're friends with. Like I got on blogs with, the only blogs I got on were the people that went to my college. So I started to realize that like this, the game was rigged a little bit. And so, and this is 2014, 2015 time. I think a lot of people remember this is like a bit of the blog era, but that personally rubbed me the wrong way as an artist. I was like, damn, there's no way to be discovered uh, unless, you're in the right place, right time. And so that's when Indify was, you know, at least the first iteration was born. The question was, can we build a music data platform that uses an algorithm to predict the next big music stars using data from SoundCloud, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify. And And to to bring up that, um, I don't mean to interrupt, but to bring up that time period also, um, it seemed like there were a good amount of artists that were local that couldn't get past being local. It was because they weren't on those websites. It was like, I, I heard of so many artists like, oh, this person, I'm from Baltimore. There were people like popping in Baltimore. Like there was a dude who sold 60,000 records in the first week for, for a mixtape in just in Baltimore 
and then ended up like fizzling out because he couldn't get that mass appeal on like pigeons and planes or oh. so it was like it, I, I totally get that it's like super gatekeepy because obviously he had a super engaged fan base i mean his songs were the anthem to the city but because but because he didn't have those inflection points on those blogs and because it wasn't as linear as it should have been at that time he kind of like fizzled out he had like a his, his his whole span of his career was like a few years because of that. So I totally get, I totally get seeing that and being frustrated. It's, it's, I think it's like, you know, they, they, everyone says if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear, it doesn't make a sound. It's like, if an artist blows up and no one's there to see that it blew up, does it make a sound? And can't right. it <laughs> go to the next level? Like, I think that right. that's what hurt and that's what kind of incepted into fight. But it's funny you bring mm-hmm. up the local thing because that led to another really key moment so, I mean, basically, Connor and I from, from college started, Connor, myself, and Matt just started working weekly. And we were, uh-huh. uh, you know, plugging in, just doing one thing a week while we were all at different schools. I was at Colgate. Somehow Colgate got Jessica Alba, MC Hammer, the president of BuzzFeed, the CEO of Warby Parker to come to the school. This is like the only time it's ever been. <laughs> and was part of a program called Thought Into Action. And um, they were like, yeah, you're going to compete against four different startups for like grant money. And so I'm like almost throwing up backstage, like so nervous in front of my whole school, in front of my, you know, everyone's parents, it was parents weekend, get up there. So you had to present in front of MC Hammer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's and interesting. All the people. Yeah. Right. Right. That's interesting. Anyway, keep going. I just, it's funny. I hear, I hear those other names and I hear MC Hammer. I'm like, MC Hammer? Oh, I mean, I guess that's cool. I just didn't realize he was in that, in that space, you know? Yeah, I think p- people haven't realized, but he's really resurged into like the tech world a little bit as a an awesome. investor, which is awesome. Yeah, and then it's like chameleon there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, um, you know. There are a lot of cool artists that are supporting great startups. Uh, right. And so he was one of them. And somehow, like you know, I like just went on stage, did my thing, like blacked out almost. Like I was like, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we like got this twenty five thousand dollars to start. And at that point, we moved. It's like to, when I came to, there was a twenty-five thousand dollar bag in front of me. <laughs> and then I woke up real quick. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was it was very lucky, and I think um, it goes to a lot of what we're doing now. Like that initial funding, those initial programs, we were so blessed and so privileged to be in front of those things. Like mm-hmm. I think being able to share that with future artists, future entrepreneurs who, who artists are, I think is, is the goal. That's awesome. So. When you have, after, after you win this competition and, you know, you guys have the grant money that you had, I think it said in an article that I was reading, it was like 25000 or something like that. Just for people who are generally starting businesses and especially tech businesses, what are the, what's the first thing, what's the first business of order after you get money like that, especially like your first round of money? Like what, what are some of the things you spend on? What are some of the things that you have to prioritize? What are some of the goals that you have to make in order to spend that money efficiently? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's incredibly fortunate that we were in the position to get access to that. And, mm-hmm. But even having that does not ensure success as like starting a, an action. Right. Right? Like, you right. Know, it's funny, like, and I think it's a really good question. When you're starting, like the first thing you have to do is actually, in, in, you know, incept the company, like make it a real thing. So you have to incorporate, you know, generally as like a C Corp or LLC or S Corp or like one of these like types of entities uh, you have to go through the incorporation documents. You have to set up your agreements with your founders. You have to kind of set up the institution. And then next thing you know, like th- that kind of initial funding is gone, <laughs> like just off of that and like starting initial payments of like whether you have to outsource some work or uh, right. or costs, you know, all these things add up and you create like what every startup knows as their burn rate, which is like every month, how much money are they burning? Right. Uh, and your net burn between like what you're making and, and what you burn is is kind of, the the pinnacle data point that you have to look at and be very right. of and how long you got exactly I mean right. I I'll be honest like building a startup I don't think there's ever been a time in my life where I haven't had a ticker in my head I know exactly right. how, how many months we have left to be alive how many months uh, you know you should go out and start to fundraise again um, and it's a very delicate balance and I think it's one that's a lot like artists you know like you understand how much you can spend and how much you can prioritize and how much you can kind of put towards growing the business. Um, I think what we were, we were lucky and, and fortunate, but at the same time, I think, you know, put in the work to be in that position was in October, 2015, uh, we were working in my basement at that point. And, and that, so that's where it takes a little bit of willpower to be an artist or an entrepreneur out the gate. It's like, you have to look at a, a situation that isn't as glamorous and just kind of 
go with it. And, and even for us with, with a lot of like tailwinds and luck behind us. But I remember Connor saying, and this was the first time Matt had put like 40,000 artists on the platform. And Connor was like, Hey, you should check out this kid on the platform. His name's Kai, K A I exclamation point. And uh, to your point about kind of local traction, there was no press, there was no blogs, but, and, and it, I think it was kind of like prophetic in that way, but he was like, you got to check out um, what's happening. There's like 60,000 SoundCloud plays, but it's completely organic few thousand followers, but it's growing pretty kind of rapidly. And um, we get on the phone with him. Connor was like, you know, reached out and, and we got in touch. And he was like, yeah, I, uh, I'm from El Paso, Texas. I'm 17. I'm recording on my cell phone. I'm, I'm doing this thing. And, um, you know, he was basically at that point, like uh, thinking about being a music teacher and, and was kind of doing his thing, but wasn't thinking, I, I don't think anything crazy on the, on the music front, but what was cool is he, um, you know, he had put out some songs that were incredible and we were like, we want to support. And so we helped him get on Pigeons and Planes, which again, like at the time, those blogs were super key. And off of that local data, and, and he said like a lot of the local kids in, in the high schools were supporting him. And, uh, you know, that piece with Pigeons really broke us to the industry. A lot of labels started reaching out, seeing the data that we had, seeing the information we had. And they were like, hey, can we get access to your tool to discover artists? Mm -hmm. um, next thing we know, and, and Kai was one of 20 artists. So there was a ton of artists on there. He like on his own kind of found a manager, went to Atlanta for a bit. He's like, I'm going to change my name to Khalid. Becomes one of the biggest artists out there. And for us, it was a big moment for us. And, and again, like we're grateful just to have been in the right place at the right time and, and been able to support him just off of the, the love of the music and seeing some early signals because that really kind of started a, a trend or started the chain in the industry for us where people were like, wow, you guys identified him really early. And then I remember Billie Eilish at 13 years old, we had featured uh, Post Malone pretty early on, um, SoundCloud rap when that was happening, Bedroom Pop. Those were all things that we kept reporting on. And it got to a point where, you know, if you climbed up our rank or if you were featured on our editorial that we, you know, Connor would send out an editorial piece every day, uh, what would happen is it would drive a lot of value for those artists. And that was really rewarding um, as sort of like a step one and, and sort of the first moment where we started to break through and in, in, into the music industry. That's awesome. right. So I know you guys uh, and, and very excited to get to the, the newest evolution of Indify. But before we go there, I mean, when it comes to discovery, you guys have obviously done tons of analysis. I'm sure ingested tons of different data points um, have built and trained and developed better algorithms to more accurately identify artists that are really popping off. What to you have been some of the uh, are some of the biggest signals or factors that you've identified as far as signifying whether or not an artist is like we got something here. Well, you know, early on, it was just very simple stuff. And I think it's like, you know, people get really afraid of data, but it's really, if you, if you can use it with domain expertise and contextualize it with music, understand music and understand fans, what you're really replicating or showing to people is, hey, how many real people care about this? How many real people love this, right? And I think that's where I push back sometimes. I think data can be really empowering. Data can empower a, a kid from anywhere in the world to be seen and have an opportunity in music because they deserve it. So I want to say that first, because I know that, you know, even the word algorithm is such a scary word right now. Um, with that, I think what I was just talking about is that blend of art and science. And, and the word that came up with Indify that always was uh, core to us and we were really proud of was context. So it's the idea that like, you know, when you look at an artist, I think the initial kind of triggers or like numbers that were like really clear uh, were like, you know, not just like streams or plays, but what, what did the follower base look like? What did the engagement look like? Like what was happening across platforms and what was happening at this early stage in terms of like accelerated growth? Because if you think about it, like, you know, it's, it's very simple. If you look at cross platform traction, an artist that's blowing up that's actually like resonating and building an audience. It's not like it only happens on SoundCloud. Like it's not like it only happens like a real artist that's building an audience. It's happening everywhere because people all over the board love that person, um, him or her, like wherever they're blowing up. So I think for us, it was about early stage acceleration, cross platform traction. And then I think our secret sauce and kind of special touch was what Connor brought to the table on top of the platform, which is, We'd send out a piece every single day, highlight an artist that was doing well, and uh, write a little bit about their story, give a little bit of the why. And when we went through the top you know, 100 or 200, you got to think that's out of 200,000 artists. That's a very small percentage that make it to our, that top of the rank. But still, you can see, okay, this artist is growing because of X, Y, Z. They're in these playlists. They, of course, should be streaming this much. But this artist from, you know, like exa exactly with the Khalid example from El Paso is, 
reacting very organically. And so highlighting those type of moments, I think was how we always uh, had an edge is that we would blend the art and science. We would provide the context and we would give the stories of these artists so that people got the full picture, not just, Hey, these are a bunch of numbers. Um, in terms of, in terms of highlighting those artists, you said data empowers, um, obviously people and validates people for the art that they're already creating. Um, but how much of, how much of what you had in those, um, I guess, email blasts or what you decided was relevant to, to people on the platform came from just data versus, um, you know, we also really like this music or was there ever a balance or, you know, so some of it is editorial, even if it comes from data because you identified what is important yourselves. Yeah. Um, but I'm just kind of wondering if there was ever a split there or, you know, that sort of thing. I think uh, the platform and the rank, we never wanted to manipulate incorrectly. Yeah. Even some days when I'm like, what's going on over here? Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, who is this? Uh, but <laughs> we have to stay true when you're, when you're talking about right. technology. But when it came to editorial, that was where we could use our voice and we could acknowledge mm. context, uh, which again, I, I don't think is as much taste. Like there was stuff that I didn't listen to in my free time that we knew was special. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and we knew it was special because it, despite all odds, despite no support, despite no team, something was still like managing to break through a little bit. That's a lot more impressive than somebody with all the money in the world in digital marketing and, and doing a ton on streaming data. And that really builds the bridge of like the why on like why Indify evolved into something different. And, and I say evolved because I think it takes a lot of what we learned in kind of the first act, as I call it. But act two takes from a lot of that, which is, you know, as an artist, what we started to see is the same managers, the same lawyers, the same agents were behind the artists on the top hundred and the same mm -hmm. act funding was behind those artists, the same right. education about digital marketing. And you start to wonder, you know, our whole idea, if you, even if you go back to that inception that we talked about just now of like the why, of why did we do Indify? We wanted to give a fair shot to every artist out there. Right. What we realized is in this first bit, we had helped democratize discovery, but we didn't help equalize opportunity because the, the dictators right. of success for an artist were still, if you had access to funding, if you had access to education, if you had access to a great team. And so um, we've evolved quite a bit into not just being a discovery tool, but being a, a discovery connection and, and now fair transaction platform so that artists and team members can safely and, and equitably partner with one another through Indify, not just for Right, awesome. So I want to pivot to um, kind of what you're doing now, but before I get to that point, I want to cover generally two things about fundraising. One for people who are thinking about starting businesses in the music tech okay. space and people who are thinking about partnering um, through Indify. So one of them is, I was on a call with someone the other day, a, a, a fairly prominent like music startup like yourself, and he was kind of telling me that, um, because I, I had a startup a long time ago, like years ago, but it was only a school competition. I never, I never like pursued it after that. And he was sort of like, yeah, well, you know, maybe that was a blessing in disguise because the, the fundraising field in music tech until recently was very slim pickings. People didn't really understand why people should invest in music tech companies. So obviously you guys have, and you've done it successfully. Um, and obviously a lot of that is because of the product itself, but generally what is the field like in terms of fundraising for a music tech company and how did you approach it? Obviously in the period that this person was saying it was a little more difficult because obviously Indify has, it's not this year that you guys became a company. It's been, it's been, you know, five years or so. So I guess, you know, when you started, how did you approach fundraising and how has that, how has that changed over time? And also round two, part two, if you're an artist on the platform, on, uh, on Indify looking for fundraising, what do those deals look like? And how do those artists position themselves to, to find great partners on the platform? That's, I love those questions. Um, I think you're dead right. And, and your friend is dead right. That like, it was, it was ugly. It was ugly for <laughs> Music was like, like you'd go like pitch a VC or music and they'd be like, like they're like allergic. <laughs> like, straight up. Like, I, I had people that most people wouldn't even take the meeting. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think startups are a lot about one word, which is timing. I think, um, right. but it's about also putting in the work before the time that it happens. And so that, that's a lot mm. of your second question, what I can talk about, but to your first, I, I, in many ways, I 
think we survived long enough to get to this point, which I think will be a revolutionary point in music. But right. backtracking to five years ago, right? Like when ultimately I, I, I and my friends are just drawing this stuff on like pieces of paper being like, this shit exists, this would be cool. Just like anybody else would be starting a company. How did we get here? I think we were fortunate to fall into programs like at Colgate University, which um, then like, you know, independently we met uh, this guy named John Exley. And John Exley would come to our basement. Uh, That's right. John Exley is the real MVP for what it's worth right now, but continue. He is, he is a saint. <laughs> He is absolutely out of his mind in the best way because, for example, he would come to my basement on the Metro North train and spend like a weekend with me and like work on, on this stuff. Like, you know, whether it was me, Connor or Matt, like he would work with us and he would do that before it was at all logical to be doing that. And so, like, I remember I would call him and even if he was in a meeting, he'd be like, excuse me, I got to take this call. This is the this is Indify. We got to, you know, this is my, my favorite thing I got to support. So. Damn. Having angels like that, no pun intended, um, you know, be able to open the door. He introduced us to um, our first lead on the VC side, Notation Capital, and uh, indirectly to our second lead, uh, Initialized Capital. So he, he's a, a huge part of the Indify story. Another person, another moment that was really lucky was Ash Pernori, Nietzsche's former manager, gave the first angel check to Indify. And that, at that point, it was awesome. off the belief and off of um off of like the heart of it and so you know versus like data again you know ironically so i think uh at that point like we were very lucky to have these supporters and and these these uh angels around us again both literally literally and figuratively <laughs> supporting us to get to this point because we, we wouldn't be here without them and so uh that's your first question yeah. you know, the second question which i think actually leads in nicely is we just survived like it was brutal. I, we saw a lot of our peers, music tech companies, just like you were talking about, like people didn't make it to this point. Uh, people yeah. ran, out, ran out of runway and people, um, you know, it, it got too crazy and people kind of shut, shut down their operations. But for us, it's always been a steady up. And, and I think there's something to building brick by brick, which we really take a lot of pride in and identify. You know, we were preparing this launch regardless, like a month ago. And about right. two and a half weeks ago, Kanye tweeted, and what he tweeted was, there needs to be a YC of music. There needs to be an ecosystem where, you know, deals and contracts are fair and transparent. And I, I had a clip that I posted a, a bunch of clips on Twitter of us saying almost verbatim what he had, what he had said using YC. I mean, in fact, Alexis, who backs Indify, and Gary Tan, who backs Indify through Initialize, they're both, you know, original members of YC. Alexis was part of the first batch. And Gary was a partner of YC. That's why we partnered with them a year ago to actually like make that exact change. So it was, I was like floored as to the idea that the whole market suddenly started to care about exactly what we were preparing to announce. And, and what that is, is a marketplace that connects artists and teams. You have Spotify, which was a marketplace that broke open the market for artists because it connected artists to millions, hundreds of millions of, of listeners, right? There are tons of listeners. Mm -hmm. Then you had, uh, um, you know, distribution platforms that were a new marketplace that connected these artists to streaming services so that any kid from anywhere who's making music, myself included, and I actually do make a little bit back from these distributors as well, I have some music <laughs> there, they allowed artists to connect with streaming services. Well, you know, you have this place where all these listeners are, you have the ability to get your music on there, and you're an artist, now what? And I think that's what I've felt as an artist, and, and a lot of my peers feel is we kind of feel left in the dust. There's no real way to right. find a manager. There's no real way to find a lawyer. There's no real way to find an, age, uh, an agent or to find funding, right? Like, and, and even when you do, odds are you might be offered a shady contract to be taken advantage of. So what Kanye was talking about with YC was not really what it is, um, which is just a fund. It's almost like a label in, in tech in, in some regards, but was the culture that it created of of creating a safe note, which all the founders could trust and was founder friendly, that it would like look out for them and, and you can raise in a day and make sure that it's a super standardized contract that is fair and equitable. And, and again, like artists are founder friendly. For us, what we've done is built the platform where we've onboarded these top partners and we've onboarded uh, a lot of top artists that are looking for partners and basically allowed them to not only discover one another, which we've gotten really good at over the years, but to message one another and connect 
And then to actually be able to partner on platform via like a very fair standardized agreement that we call the Indie Note, which mirrors sort of the safe in, in the, uh, in the tech technology world. And so where we're at now is we're trying to onboard these artists that need help, trying to help them get to the next level. And we're trying to onboard partners that can help them get there. But for us to be the most successful at this, we have to make sure that the platform is gated to just good partners that we know are actually going to help these artists. And then at the same time, artists that are going to be interesting to these partners. So what I would say to an artist that is coming on this platform is, is and, and to an artist that's out there in general that might not even be ready at the, to be on, on the, the new Indify platform or not, might not like necessarily uh, qualify yet. What I would say is there's a ton of tools that we're going to be putting out on like how to build. And I can give some tips right now. As an artist that streams 15K per day on Spotify, which is actually pretty insane, um, I basically got there by, by hustling by DMing bloggers, um, you know, there are certain blogs like Fashionably Early, Lyrical Lemonade, Hilly Dilly, that uh, are now before the data, that allow you, that funnel into like a ton of different like uh, big, bigger sources or bigger playlists or like, you know, third party playlists. So hmm. those are good places to like start. And then additionally, um, you know, your ability to just connect and consistently post content, do different series, like whether it's a cover series, whether it's, you know, you just talking to your fans you know, the ability to put yourself out there and really just take shots early. That's what uh, really made Curtis Waters, who recently had a, a big hit song, get there. He was just posting a dance every day on TikTok with his right. brother. And one of them took off and now he has a top 40 uh, radio hit and, and is actually still independent. So um, my biggest advice, you know, for artists that are coming and looking to be on the platform and looking for partners is to, to do as much as you can yourself. Um, and it's tough, but if you can, like, you know, DM different uh, third-party playlist owners, uh, go on TikTok, try to connect with influencers and have them post your videos. Look at the YouTube channels that are out there that like are posting different music that fit your kind of lane. Um, and then even look at some of the blogs and stuff that, that fit in this world and do your best to reach out to them because that can be a bridge for you to have like a moment that you never even expected. Right. That's awesome. Right. So when it comes to kind of what artists, I mean, you mentioned for artists that might not be ready yet. I mean, what kind of are you looking for at the artists right now? And then obviously over time, I'm sure you plan to open this up to artists and partners and all different kind of tiers, if you will. But where are you at right now as far as who you're looking for from an artist perspective? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, if, if it's an artist that's looking for funding, we're hoping that they have a good team in place already. And otherwise, it's an artist that's already like building an audience that, um, is looking for a manager or a lawyer, which is like the direct kind of wording of team that we use. And I think we've been able to help a ton of artists not only find funding, but to actually find their lawyer or manager as well, which oftentimes are really important before you go into like further discussions to have those things in place. Like, and when I say funding, you know, there are a lot of early stage distribution options that are out there. Um, you know, you have like the AWOLs, the Orchards, the Empires of the World that are amazing. And what's cool about Indify is we're empowering a whole new cohort of early stage partners for music. For example, like Alexis himself invested in an artist named Kirby, and they've already had like a successful partnership where Alexis has already kind of made his money back and they're exploring like, you know, potentially doing more together. So what's really exciting is, is uh, you know, who we can, and I, I won't say names, but who we can potentially enable to partner with artists going forward. And so I think that's what's cool about like where we're going. But I would say as an artist, I think, really just doing your best to build a real fan base and, uh, and, and kind of going through those channels that I mentioned will put you in the best position to be on Indify. We have some internal things that we review, but really like we use our internal data tools and discovery tools to try to onboard the artists that we think will be the, the most able to be helped. That's really why we're doing that. Right, for sure. And then on the flip side, what about on the, the partner, manager, or lawyer side? I mean, how are you going about evaluating partners there? I think it's, it's about who they work with and, and what they've done and, and what they've been able to show in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but even, you know, when it comes to new managers and, and new partners, we, we're looking for those partners too, especially if they're working with an up and art coming artist that they're already starting to like break to the next level. What's cool is a lot of the partners on the artist end, because the artists are being vetted, um, also can be partners on the, the partner end. And so you have this kind of world of multi-channel services that are going to start to connect where you know, you might have a manager and a lawyer that work together on a ton of artists and as a package are like really good. And so in the future, and, and you might have two investors that want to invest together or two funding partners that want to fund an artist together, that together they have like cover marketing and cover like kind of playlist pitching or something like that. So 
for us, it's about, you know, really unbundling and re-piecing together the services that you need as an artist. And, and to sum up in kind of one word, like what Indify is, is it is a music services marketplace where you can pick and choose those different services that you need. That's awesome. On the funding side, it's reminding me of uh, like syndicates by AngelList. Yeah. Well, so that's where, you know, I'm so glad you brought it up because if there's anything that I believe is missing from the, the larger conversation of music and tech and the analogy there, A and R and VC, which I think is super interesting and why I think Jordan actually is super interesting. You're bringing up like what it's like to go through life as a founder, not only as a musician. Mm-hmm. I think the commonalities are, are so much more than, than we think. And I think, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think that extends like so broadly um, you know, even beyond like what we think, um, you know, the parallels could be, I think artists are very much founders and, and vice versa. I think as a founder, you're yep. creating something new for the world. And so there's yep. a lot of similarities and commonalities. I think the piece missing from the conversation in that, in that, uh, comparison, everyone's talking about YC. Well, you know, what artists could really use as an angelist, a place where you can hire a team, a place where you can find investors you could have invested in, as I understand it, and, and I hope I'm right about this, but I believe you could have invested in Uber on AngelList. Like it was an active deal. And same thing as Spotify. And I think, you know, the, there, there are artists like that on Indify already that you could have invested in or you could have been part of their story empowering. Um, that I think Sam's would be- over here mentally smacking his head. Like yeah, I could have yeah, invested in Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I could have had a bag. I've got, a, been that big. I've got a stake in the uh, the masters of Jordan's throwaway tracks. We're, we're waiting oh, to release it at the right time. He's bringing them up, man. No, no. <laughs> yeah, man. We got to hear that. Yeah, let's hear it, Jordan. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing joke with him in episodes because I've made them all private across the internet. So he's like, yo, you got to you got to you got to take it's them not out. For me. It's not for me. Everybody for bug Jordan for him to take them out. But anyway, <laughs> what were you saying, bro? <laughs> well, no, no I, I think. Uh, you know, that's so funny because what I was saying is artists are founders and founders are artists. And that's exactly, you're, you're both, man. <laughs> you're you're yeah. both like me. So yeah, uh, I respect <laughs> I mean, it. It's so interesting. I mean, the, the, even just like the whole VC world and like artist development, it's like the exact same business model. It's like a, uh, you're essentially like, I was talking with somebody and they're like the whole music industry runs off like the top, like 1% of musicians. I mean, venture, ca- it's obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but I mean, venture capital is by like on the whole, a very risky asset class. It's literally 80, 20 on steroids. It's like the top one or two companies in your portfolio are going to account for like all of your returns, whereas every other company isn't. So I think it's uh, to be able to obviously the, I mean, the tech and venture capital world is obviously a very like tech forward world, but to be able to apply a lot of the the same technologies and matchmaking tools and, and marketplaces and business models to the music industry, super powerful, and valuable. So yeah, I do think you. though that um, music is becoming at least, and this is why Indify I think is in such a good place. It's becoming a little bit more of a safe bet the more information and data you have. So like, if somebody has two hundred thousand followers, and, and you know maybe you disagree with me, Shaver, or you probably agree actually because Indify. Um, but, but, uh, you know, the, the more <laughs> monthly listeners you have on Spotify, um, the more, the, the better your chances are of actually like recouping your investment because monthly listeners don't just drop off on a dime. Most of the time, if the artist is consistent and like works really hard. And there's also a lot of points of entry to the artist too. So there's like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I, I always tell people, at least this is just in my opinion, like people can become not famous but it's much harder than it was in like the 2010s and 2005s to just like fall off just like no one knows where you are nobody knows what you're doing nobody knows where you live like that used to be a thing like we all know who Lil Zane is or do we you know what I mean <laughs> but like but like now there's so much that you know companies like Indify are illustrating such a larger picture of what actually is sustainable in the music industry and what that looks like you know so you can actually bet on those artists with way more signs than you could before if you were like just an a and r at a record label in the 2000 in the mid 2000s you know i think we're at the apex of some of those movements in tech too i think tech is uh-huh. to be uh you know to support more independent kind of earlier stage companies that are more of these 99 percent model versus the one percent superstar model um mm-hmm. there's a group called indie vc that supports 
companies like that that is actually showing a similar like trend. And I think Angel supports the same. I think what's really interesting, Jordan, is what you said uh, was the backbone of what I've been trying to say for the last year. Uh, right. Working with artists and investing in music is one of the safest bets you could ever make right now. I think it's, mm -hmm. you know, when I first met Alexis, he had tweeted, I wish I could invest in Lizzo Enterprises. And I was like, <laughs> invest in the next one on Indipop. And mm -hmm. boom, so a friend showed it to him, like actually got it into the right hands. Basically, like it got seen. And next thing I know, you know, I'm talking to him at the US Open and we're chatting. And the thing that he couldn't get over and that I think kept bringing him back is I was like, no, it's music, investing in music is safe. And I think he was like, how could that be? And, yep. you know, he, he believed it and he invested in Indify and Next thing you know, he invested in an artist not, not that many months ago, and he's already made his money back on the artist and is, is in right. positive, especially because he's a great strategic partner that adds value as well. And that's right. what we're trying to be, you know, trying to gatekeep to in, in the platform right now is we just want to keep it gated to people that actually help artists. And that's a tougher thing to distinguish. And like you said, we're, we're doing our best. But if you really look at music and you were talking about like streams falling off, if you think about it, I think music's going through the biggest change it's ever gone through in the last like five to 10 years. And then music and the humankind has ever gone through. This is like an ancient. Yeah. If you think about it, you know, for the first time and everyone was celebrating and you got a hundred songs in your pocket on, on your iPod, we have 50 million songs in our pocket, just like that. And if you think about the way that the economics work, it used to be you buy a song for, you know, 99 cents and then you could listen to it for the next 50 years. You still paid 99 cents for the song. Now the amount of listening over those 50 years is for the first time even being tracked and counted. And it's not on a yeah. scene, it's not on a download. So if you think about what that's creating, beyond the fact that for the first time I in my bedroom can make music here, upload it to, to these streaming platforms and make money, you're creating what I think in the next five years, you know, five years ago, Indify was like, let's start building data analytics tool in AR in, in the AR world. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be important it became the center uh, right now it's everything but i think what people are missing is what's going to happen in the next five years what's going to happen in the next five years and all the data is shown this if you look at like the independent market if you look at uh sort of the 99 percent boom there's going yeah. to be an explosion of the 99 percent of music that I, I think in the next few years we're going to see but but in year five if you look at you know the stairway to having a report from goldman sachs and how it's, it's talking about the music industry essentially doubling and you look at where that growth yeah. is coming from the independent music market so the boom the boom of the 99 percent uh is upon us we want to we want to enable that to happen right right that's awesome it's awesome man dope dope um well i think i'm all i'm all good on my end this conversation was amazing dude um you, you're such a smart dude obviously i've been a, a fan of indify for for a good amount of time now i had Shout out Federico Morris. He actually used to work yeah. for uh, the company I used to work for. I used to intern at Indify. Would tell me all about it all the time coming into the office. So um, excited to see where you guys go next, man. And just as it's just as a fan of like a music of the music industry, I'm excited to what this can do for for artists and for managers and for lawyers and just helping people connect. So definitely glad that you know we we spread that uh, with the with our audience as well. It, it means a lot that you guys are supporting. Um, you know it. it Platforms like this are super artist first. We're trying to be, in, and we always, I think, have been like artist first. Um, for me, it's all coming from the love of an artist. And it's not like, you know, some of these other CEO artists, like I have 4 million streams out here. I'm like really doing the thing. <laughs> I, I, That's I, the show I, off, bro. People are up on Spotify and, and Instagram and everything. But like, I think, yeah, check us out on socials. What you'll see on, on uh, at Indify and at underscore Indify on Instagram, at Indify on Twitter. Basically, we're going to keep you know sharing ways that we can we can help you as an artist grow. And if you're a partner, right. you build your roster. Uh, you know, make sure to apply, and, and we can potentially get you going as well. So, but I appreciate you guys you know giving us the voice and supporting it means a lot. Yeah, sure. definitely, man. We'll, we'll keep up the great work. Uh, until next time, man. Thank you so yeah. much. All right, yeah. see you. Damn. Well, that was a great episode, man. What do you think, Jordan? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. I think you know when we can also. When we can both cover uh, our guests' company and their mission, um, but also the thinking that went behind it, I think is when we really get gold. And I think when we spoke about how music is a safe investment now and um, how that idea was so foreign, you know, five, 10 years ago, I think kind of 
uh, you know, gives our listeners an idea of why Indify is so important right now and how it was able to pivot to something um, so vital for the music industry. Um, I think I think music now is, is is building legs in a way that it didn't used to. So, you know, you can have a company like Indify help you find a manager, help you find a lawyer, um, help you find a real partner because um, just the 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 asset value of, of music has has gone up with streaming, social media. It, it's just giving it legs, and us being able to go into the uh, into the backbone of that and the backbone of Indify and and, and to, for Shab to to comment on it directly, I thought was dope. What'd you think, Sam? Yeah, I thought it was incredible. I, I think using market feedback to inform their product roadmap and also have this long-term vision around what are the, the real real high level problems that they want to solve in the industry and, and using that as kind of this vision setting exercise to me is great. Like, I, I love that. Like even with Knox and what we're building, it's like a very phased approach. What we're doing now isn't necessarily mm-hmm. what we want to be doing three, four, five years from now. And I think for Shab, I mean, just this recent pivot too is just a testament to that. So love what he's building. More importantly though, we love y'all. So thank you guys for tuning in. This is another uh, another week, another episode. There you have it. We'll be back next week and appreciate you greatly. Cheers. Appreciate you guys.